that's the thing that I would pose to to you is that <clears throat> when you're knocked back into that type of scenario, uh, a lot of times the 21st century, 20th century solutions are kind of out the window. But, um, I mean, you're right. In a temporary sense, <clears throat> you could do that. But just how long can you supply your area with that kind of uh, merchandise before it runs out? And then you're still going to have the problem anyway. Well, you, you, know? you can say that with everything, with food and all your supplies. You, you Absolutely. Can't, you but can't stop renewable, for the rest food, of your life. But food's a renewable resource. You can plant seeds in the ground and continue to grow it. Unfortunately, I mean, you can plant rubber trees, but after that, you don't have the wherewithal to go ahead and manufacture those. Now, um, the thing – it was interesting, and I – didn't you find it interesting that when I posed Bob the question about, you know, you're a guy just starting out, you want to put your money in something, what do you do? And he said, canned goods. I mean, I, I found that to be pretty profound coming from a guy that spent his entire career uh, in the gold and silver market. Don't well, you think, Rick? That's, that's what I would have said. Oh, I know that. I know. Yeah. I, I think the ultimate is uh, freeze-dried and seeds. But you see with the seeds you have another problem uh, facing you. It's uh, safety of your fields 24 hours a day, 7 days a week in the night um, uh, securing um, your your plants because mm -hmm. people will come and steal your food. So oh, absolutely. somebody has to stay up all night and guard the food. Yeah, you're going to have to have some sort of watch rotation going. Um, it, it, kind of like a circle the wagon type of thing, uh, you know, in the, in the old days. Uh, there's no doubt about it. <clears throat> We're entering into an era <clears throat> where you've got the talking head saying, well, you know, we're, uh, the recovery is fragile, yet we're on the way up and everything like that. <clears throat> the reality is, at least where I am, is that people are suffering. I mean, there's incredible suffering out there. And while uh, while I think that it's bad. I think it's a lot worse, especially in the rest of the world, than it is here. Uh, I don't think people really understand just how bad it can be. And Americans especially have been spoiled uh, by the standard of living that we've had for so long. And the unfortunate thing, and uh, I'd like to get your thought on this, Griff, is it's not sustainable, is it? No, no. I we're mean, we're we're way into into the future right now. I didn't think it could last this long, but it it cannot be sustained. No, I I, I really don't think it can either. I don't I don't in the in the long term I don't foresee uh, civil unrest being a permanent thing or anarchy being a permanent thing. But I do see a certain uh, level of unrest that, that would have a uh, world-changing type of effect. And then what comes in its place, God only knows. Because, uh, you know, if, if anybody's ever been into a war-torn nation or a place where um, you don't have structure... What you have is regional warlords and things like that, and believe me, that's not good either. So you got to be very careful what you wish for. You know, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. And while I, I despise, absolutely despise the direction that we're heading now, believe me, folks, it could be a thousand times worse, a thousand times worse than what we're facing here. And that, and believe me, I'm not, I'm not justifying it, not in any way. But, um, but you got to be very careful about what you wish for. And uh, <clears throat> what do you think, Riff? How do, how do you think, how do you think that the next year is going to look? I mean, in your eyes, based on your life experience. I don't know that I really believe that the numbers mean uh, that much. I don't believe the stock exchange numbers mean anything. Uh, don't waste your time looking at that. Most people don't have enough money to, to go there. They don't have enough money to, to buy gold or silver, maybe a little silver, but what are you going to do with it? 
You're right. much better off buying food. Uh, the prices on freeze-dried food have skyrocketed, something like 20-some, almost $30 for a can of hamburger meat freeze-dried, close to $30. Imagine that, $250 for a case of six cans, Good as, Lord. as I remember. Um, so everything is going up, 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 up. And we're we're basing uh, those figures on um, paper money that are not dollars, that are nothing, nothing. Nobody can define what they are. Um, uh, that's that's so important to me to to make that clear to people, and people don't understand that. And mm -hmm. I, I can I can understand what you're saying, of course, but um, that's where it starts. We have a paper money system that has no value whatsoever, and nobody can define what it is. I mean, how can you go from there? How can you make sense out of any of this? Yeah. And they've lied to us and manipulated us. I wanted to ask Bob a question, and maybe we can get him next time, um, to ask him if it is his belief that the Obama administration and um, Obama is deliberately trying to bring the country down. Is or, he, is, or is he is just he a Arab? figurehead? Is he, is is he, he just Arab? a figurehead? Yeah, I don't know if he's Arab, but is he just a figurehead? Is he an end, end to justify the means? Is he pro-Arab? No, let me put it that way. Is his actions... Uh, working in concert with the Arab uh, um, ideology of bringing the country down. I, I think so. I do too. I would like to know what Bob thinks of that. Yeah, I think so. And uh, you I know think what? It's all orchestrated. Perhaps I'll email him that question and see what uh, and, and see what he says. Um, so you know, let me let me go to the phones real quick, and before we go to break here, let's go to Brad in Nashville. Sure. Brad, you're live on the air. Hi. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, to bring up um, how a lot of people uh, instruct others just to go out in the country if they want to survive mm -hmm. um, and get a, get a home out in the, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but there's there's more dynamics involved. I mean, if you if you're going to go out in the country, uh, you need to be prepared. Uh, well, one part of preparation is having someone close to you or, or not too distant from you. Um, you, you know, you, there is strength in numbers. Uh, that that might be one of the benefits of actually being uh, in a semi-urban or urban areas. You have you've got quite a bit of people around you, so the mm -hmm. nature of crime would be different. You know, sure. uh, if you're not absolutely prepared to stand guard over your farm, um, you know, on 24 hours a day, you know, some some roving band of criminals criminals could catch you off guard and uh, you know hold you up in your house for days at a time if if you can't get to your gun or something. You know. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of different factors involved. Uh, you know, you can get robbed in the city, but there's generally a lot of people around. The crimes, the kind of crime that would occur in a city would be something fast. You know, something that right. that comes and goes. No, you um, definitely have to you definitely have to be more prepared. And it's funny you say that, Brad, because about a year ago I moved out into the country, and there's a your whole um, whole mindset has to change. I've lived in I've lived in the city all my life, and everything had to change. The way I perceived things, the way I went to the grocery store, because the grocery store is almost an hour away. You know, stupid things like that. It, it just changes every facet of your life. You know, you lose power where I'm at, and all of a sudden I can't flush toilets, and I don't have any running water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and you're absolutely right. You. The, the dynamic changes because there's nobody around to help you out if, uh, say, some bandits come and hold you up. Yeah, but it that, seems to me that there's a give and take with both situations, you know. Um, there, there is, but let me tell you a little bit. There's a mentality out here that's different than what you have in the city. Out here, at least where I am, it's very close-knit as far as the people and I mean, my my nearest neighbor, my nearest neighbor is about three acres away from me, and um, and they're all we all have the same mindset. We're all kind of in. Um, it, it sounds like a war zone on the weekends out here because we're all target shooting and everything like that. But uh, <laughs> but what I'm I guess what I'm trying to say is is when you do that, you kind of got to take it upon yourself to get to know the people closest to you and around you, you know, get to know your sheriff because people in law enforcement out here aren't exactly all bad. 
I mean, we have a sheriff and six deputies to cover 337 square miles. These guys just don't have the time to do uh, anything. They're, they're seriously undermanned. So what happens is uh, a lot of people, if you do have crime, take the matters into their own hands and do the job for the sheriff. <laughs> yeah, they, they're probably more interested in standing for some ideals than going on a power trip. Exactly right. Exactly right. So uh, I mean, it is give and take. Yeah, Gr- Griff had mentioned. Well, what are they going to do with the babies if you know if, if there aren't enough condoms? Well, uh, if it gets bad enough, you know, uh, I'm sorry to say the you know they people may start doing what was done in the ancient times and eat their children. <laughs> they do that in China, don't they, John? Oh uh, yeah, so we got banned on YouTube and got flagged for that little baby soup video that we put up about six months ago. Yeah. Yeah, we actually uh, we actually had done a video back when we had our old Freedom Link channel that exposed um, one of the Chinese customs of eating uh, f- uh, babies, aborted uh, fetuses. They make soup out of it. Said it, uh, it it's good for their libido. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just crazy stuff like that. But I mean, it's uh, you're, you're absolutely right. There's um, in that kind of situation. I think the last people, the last thing people think about are the things like you talk about, Griff. You know, the average, the average Joe doesn't think about tampons. You know, or or well, you know, birth control or anything like that, because there's no planning. It's like I said on the last show. Sanity has become insanity, and insanity has become sanity because back. And let me pose this to you, Griff. During the war. Or after World War II, in, in in and around the Korean conflict, the mindset back then was to be prepared. You know, uh, prepare yourself, uh, be organized, understand that you know some things might happen, and you want to make sure you're prepared to handle that. Uh, but today, it's considered you're considered a crackpot if you do that. You're considered a crackpot if you put food away or if you put water away or if you do any sort of disaster preparedness because the general consensus is the government's going to take care of you. Oh, don't worry. The government will help us. FEMA will be there. No sweat. You know? Well, those people will die and you won't. Oh, it is true. It is true. I I would just like to interject a point here. I I think this turmoil that's going on over in the Middle East, particularly over in Egypt, the powers that be are taking very good notes. And the thing I think that they don't, they didn't count on, was when the riot started and the bands of thugs were released from the jails and they started roaming the neighborhoods. The neighborhoods banded together, armed themselves with whatever they could and protected themselves and their next-door neighbors and the people around them. And I think once that happens, not only in the, will will that happen in the countryside, but that will happen in the bigger cities just as well. No, I, I totally agree with you, John. And, Brad, thank you so much for the phone call. Uh, when we come back from break, folks, we're going to be uh, in the home stretch of the show. Uh, anybody that wants to call, please call the number 877-598-8549. This is Freedom Link Radio on the Intel Hub News Network. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. You are the Are you still paying your credit cards and so-called bank loans thinking that you owe the money? Do you feel like it's your moral obligation but can't see an end in sight? Well, what if I told you that in truth, you don't owe a single penny and that the banks know this and hope you don't find out? Here's where we come in. Free2Prosper.com specializes in a profound debt repudiation method which challenges the validity of your so-called debts, morally frees you from the burdens, and protects your property. Our system is often superior to settlement, bankruptcy, or consolidation, which often leave you in a worse situation. If you feel the moral obligation to take care of yourself and your family, then I urge you to consider taking action right now. The economy will not wait. If you want to know more so you can prosper through the economic collapse, all while staying honorable and true to yourself, then call 877-417-8393. 
That's 877-417-8393. Or visit freetoprosper.com right now. Hey, it's me, Shepard, the host of the Intel.